Well, welcome back to Shane's Main Shop. Today, I'm going to show you a video. This video is going to be about changing some blades, how to change a blade in a little um, jigsaw, scroll, uh, jigsaw slash scroll saw, and I'll show you how to change a blade in a sawzall. And I'll show these in action real quick too. Uh, so, and the, the difference between the two of these, well, there's a lot of differences, but the main difference, this is more for uh, deconstruction, like if you're just doing some non-precision work on a cut out a wall stud or something like that these things are great for that they're not really good for precision work or anything like that but you can cut wood metal um you know piping all kinds of stuff plastic with these and you can do the same with this of course your um your cut capacity is much less but with this depending on the blade you use you can do nice curves circles um and more detailed work uh, as opposed to this and this particular one actually has a nice feature you can actually turn the blade sideways as well hopefully you can see that and I believe you can go right backwards with it too yeah so this one here is a little unique as far as that goes um, but let's get right to it so if the blade is dull and you need to change it out how do you do it in a scroll saw <laughs> well I'm a little bit bummed I just shot this entire video um, but I only got like the first little bit of it somehow I Click the button and shut the darn thing off. Okay, so as far as a scroll saw, uh, the chains of blade, they're all pretty much about the same, but there's a couple screws that you need to deal with on a scroll saw or you know a jigsaw or whatever you want to call it. Uh, this happens to be an older Craftsman auto scroller, it's called. You have um, the, set, the set screw on the side here that goes into the hole on the side of the blade itself, which I'll show you in a minute. And this set screw on the front, which is an Allen screw, that pushes the bit blade back into its proper position. And uh, there's the blade itself. So what you're doing is you're actually catching this hole right here when you uh, tighten that screw down. It catches right inside that so the blade can't just fly out. Uh, there's several different types of blades you can get for scroll saws. Here's an inexpensive kit, Black & Decker. You can get all different brands. Um, good ones, cheap ones, this is probably low to medium uh, quality. I wouldn't call them the best for sure, but they're okay. Um, but you can see the, the um, teeth counts are different on them, and the width of the blade is different. Uh, this thinner one here is great for you know going around tighter corners or doing more fancy scroll work. And then you get some finer teeth down here that are uh, designed for cutting metal. Uh, so you have some options uh, if you have one of these scroll saws for doing several different things. Uh, they're handy. Uh, they do a, a lot of uh, a lot of fun stuff you can do with them. Um, but in this case, this blade is fine, so I'm going to put it back in. Um, to do that, it's pretty much reverse of the same process you just did. Uh, the key thing is to make sure that that screw catches that hole uh, in the blade so it doesn't come out when you're using the saw. So you want to get it in there and then get your screw started until you know you've caught that hole in the blade. And once you know you've caught it, you're not tight yet, but you've caught the hole so it can't come out, you want to go ahead and tighten this set screw on the front, which will push the blade back into position and make sure it stays straight. You can actually see it straighten out a little bit when I tighten this up. So you don't want to reef down on this, but you do want to make it good and snug. Then you can go back and tighten this blade right down to make sure it's not going to go anywhere and once you've done that this thing is good to go and you can uh, cut all kinds of stuff with it depending on the blade you have in there so uh, again i'm going to show you a, a sawzall blade change as well uh, these two tools are really designed for two completely different things this is more of a detailed um, you can even make uh, much more detailed scroll stuff with this tighter curves and all that type of stuff where this is really designed for deconstruction sawing out um, you know studs in the wall or whatever you're just trying to cut a new door through somewhere just really rough work um, and made for cutting a lot heavier stuff too you can cut metal if you could a good metal blade on here you can cut chunks of metal piping uh, plastic piping whatever of course the the capacity of this is much more than this you can only cut so much of these but um, this the sawzall I mean you can get a pretty long blade I don't know if it shows that but that's 8 to 11 12 it's probably like a foot long it's at least 10 11 inch long blade uh, so you, you certainly can't do that in a, 
uh, scroll saw. I guess you could try, but I don't think it'll work. Um, but so that's how the blade changes in a scroll saw, and they're pretty much the same way. There's two screws, and pretty much every one I've ever seen, that's how you do it. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. In a sawzall, it's uh, very simple as well. In fact, it only has one screw. And hopefully you can see this plate right here I'm pointing to with my thumb. And that screw on top, that plate squeezes against the blade, against the, uh, the shaft that comes out of the housing here that goes back and forth. And when I loosen it up, you'll see what I'm talking about. You might even be able to see the bottom of the screw sticking down right there um, that goes through that. And it goes through the, um, the whole thing. And there's a, a pin on part of this plate that catches that blade. And I'll show you that. So you're just going to loosen that up a little bit. And you can see this is all afloat now. The screw can stay in um, because what catches the blade is, uh, there's a hole right there in the blade, and what catches it is a little little dimplet in this plate in front of that screw. And you know, I can actually take that right out and I'll just show you. And you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So if you're trying to do this, sometimes if you can see exactly what I'm talking about, it makes more sense. So there's the screw right there. Here's the plate. And see, there's that little dimplet right there, that little pin that sticks out. And when you slide this in there, it's catching on that pin like that. And then the screw is right there behind it. It tightens it all down, so then it can't come out. So that's what's happening inside there, and it squeezes it down tight, and you're good to go. I'll put this back in there, just going to set it there. And Of course, this blade seems to be fine. And like I was showing you earlier, there's a bunch of different blades you can get for it, that long one I was showing you. Um, but you can get a finer tooth blade. Now this one's sh shot. It's been used to capacity. It really needs to be thrown away. Uh, but this one here has a much finer tooth and really designed for doing more metal cutting and things like that. So there's a, a big variety of blades you can get for this as well. It's pretty, pretty extensive depending on what you're trying to cut. Um, so keep that in mind. They're very universal, but you certainly can't do the same detail work as you can with a scroll saw. But to go ahead and put a new blade in, uh, you're just going to make sure this plate is loose. You're going to slide the blade. Let me move my hand, hopefully it's showing up there. Basically, you're just lifting up on this plate a little bit. You can do it with the blade, but I'll just try to do it with my thumb so you can, my fingers so you can see. You're going to get this in there, and I'm, I'm holding up on it so I know I catch on that little pin. And then if you just push down and hold it, you can just go ahead and tighten this down. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to tighten it all the way yet. I'm just going to just enough so it's holding. And I'll, I want so it's still loose. You can see the blade is still loose. I just want to make sure that pin is caught that hole in the blade. And once I know that's caught in there like that, it's not coming out. Then we can go ahead and tighten this blade down really good, so it's not going to come out. And now you can see it doesn't move at all. Uh, so that's pretty much it. So if you need to change a blade in a scroll saw or a sawzall, uh, it's as simple as that. These things are great tools. I'll try to put links for them in the description as well as some different blade options. But um, I may not be able to find these ones, especially this old sear. This thing's been around a long time. But I'll put something equivalent to it. These things have a lot of good uses. Um, but I'll just take a second here and show you them each in action real quick. So you can kind of see what they do. Hopefully the blade's actually fairly sharp. So stand by while I move the camera. All right, so I got it running. Hopefully you can hear that. I'm just going to go ahead and this is a piece of hardwood, so I don't know how well it's going to do. Um, but what you want to try and do is keep this plate up against your work as good as you can. Now this is clamped way back here, so I hope I don't get too much shake in this. So there you go. Now that blade actually is uh, dull, so it probably ought to be changed. And this is hardwood. I think it's oak. So, But that did pretty good, all considering. Um, but you can see it's not a nice cut. It's nothing fancy. It's just designed to really uh, chop something apart. It's, I guess it's not a terrible cut. But, you know, it's just trying to, trying to do a quick cut. If you're trying to put a doorway in somewhere, it's really made for deconstruction, not really... Um, fancy stuff, but they do have a, a use and they are super handy. This particular one's pretty quiet too. I've had some that are super loud. 
So anyway, that is the Sawzall. Okay, the scroll saw is really designed for cutting uh, thinner stuff. Like in this case, I got a piece of plywood here, a thin piece of half inch plywood. Um, but it's designed for that. And, and I got it clamped down because again, if you have a lot of shake, it's just gonna vibrate and not cut good. Um, but you wanna keep this plate um, right tight against your work. And let's hope this blade is sharp too. see started vibrating on me quite a bit because my clamp came loose but until then it was cutting good but you see uh, the curves I'm making with it so you really can't cut curves like that and if you have a thinner blade you can cut even tighter curve and I was just going really quick with this but you can't do that with the sawzall really you can do somewhat of curves but nothing like this um, but the you know this thing is uh, Really handy, you can even cut some plastic with it. Let's clamp this down real quick. Part of my problem was this clamp kept coming loose. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, you can cut some plastic with this as well. Let's see how this works. Now you can see there with that blade, even that blade, I still I did a pretty, pretty tight curve there. Uh, so that's just some of the uses you can use these for too. If you need to cut curves and stuff like that, they are fantastic. So if you have one, uh, or if you don't and you need one, I'll put some links in the description. Uh, remember, this one's a little bit fancier. It's got this added benefit of turning this blade sideways and backwards. Uh, you don't need that for most things, uh, but you can do a lot with them. I'll put a link in the description, and of course. Hopefully, uh, if you do have one, or if you have one given to you or whatever, this will help you change the blade properly to make sure it's in there secure and not going to fall out. At any rate, thanks for swinging by Shane's Main Shop. Have a great day. Don't forget to like, comment, thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments. There's a lot of other woodworkers out there too. You can uh, tell me what I did wrong. Uh, it's fine with me. I appreciate it. I'm always looking to get better as well. Have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.